Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf, and today we are talking about buffers. So what are buffers? Well, they allow you to store information, they allow you um, to be saved or loaded, they can be encrypted, um, and generally are a lot more efficient um, than using traditional variables. So, let's have a look at how buffers can be used. So, you can imagine your buffer as being a region of uh, memory, within your memory. So, um, if this is your uh, memory on your computer, when you create a buffer, it will define a region in space, of, in, like so. And, um, then once you have created this, you know, all that's over here will be data used by another program, all that's over here be used by another program. However, all of the thing inside the buffer over here is uh, for you to store information in once it's created. So um, when you create a buffer, you have to define its size, which is uh, basically this in bytes, in bytes. Um, and you have to decide what type of buffer it is. So, what is uh, important to note about buffers is the way you store information on them. So, uh, you can see if this were to be my buffer over here, and I start uh, putting information in it, so, you know, I may write some, some data over here, and it uses up this space, uh, and next time I write data to it, it'll write more data at, right next to it, like so. And the way it does this is by introducing something called a seek. So, to start off with, the seek uh, of your um, buffer will start at the very beginning, like so. And when you start um, writing data to it, it'll basically move the seek forwards, write in your data, which uh, will be over here, and the seek will now be in front of your data. And next time you write, or basically write the data in front of the seek, move the seek forwards again, uh, and it's now ready for some more data to be accepted. So with buffers, you basically don't have to um, remember where you last wrote data to. So if you already used arrays before, you'll know that it's quite important to remember what index you're at for the next time you're going to write any data to it, so otherwise you're going to overwrite. With buffers, they actually um, do this by themselves, so you can write some data, write some more, without really having to give an index or anything of the kind. Now, you may ask, what happens when the seek gets to the end? Well, that's a really good question, and this is where the different buffer types come in. So, the first buffer type is called uh, the buffer fixed. So, the buffer fixed is actually really quite simple. When you write your data um, to your, when you have your buffer like so, whoops, I should probably be using my pen, can I not do this? No, I can't. Sorry, I'm using a program I'm not familiar with. And, um, and it says this size like so, and you start writing data to it. When you get to the end, you are at the end, so you know, this here is the limit, and there is nothing you can do. You just have to, you know, go back to the front and start overwriting all your data. There is, you know, and if you do try to write more, it will simply, you know, say there is no more space in the, in the buffer. The second type of buffer is called the buffer grow. And just as the name suggests, it grows. So, you can imagine having your buffer like this again. and um, the limits are defined here and over here and um, if you start you know putting some data in so like so once you get to this point once the seed gets to this point it will simply push the limit back so you know the limit will be pushed back and it will allow for more data to be stored and once again if you want to add more data it will simply grow the buffer some more Make this straight, and uh, it will allow you to store more and more data. So the buffer, the grow buffer, is really really good 
if you don't know how much data you're going to have to store. So, um, say you're, you know, you're storing loads and loads of user input and you need all of it. For example, you might want to store his name. You don't know how long it's going to be. Buffer grow is going to be what you want. Now, the third uh, uh, type is called a buffer wrap. This one is quite cool um, because, again, name describes it pretty well, I find. It will wrap back to the front when you exceed maximum data. So you can have your limits here and here. And say you wrote a lot of data, everything is filled with data, and now you got to the end. What will happen is any further data you try to write will simply come to the front and overwrite what you had before. And it will do so automatically. So the seek, which was uh, you know here at the end, will jump back to the front over here. And so you don't have to remember anything. Um, you know, you don't have to keep track of where you're at before you have to come back and overwrite. It does it for you, which is really quite nice. The problem with buffer wraps is that you may start overwriting data that you actually needed. The reason you would use a buffer wrap is when you only need the last few pieces of data, um, you know, you don't want to keep something that was, say, you know, five steps ago, then you'll make your buffer five, step, uh, five bytes long if you're only storing one byte per step, for example. And um, you, all you have to do is simply read whatever was, uh, whatever's behind the seek, and, you know, it will keep on building behind it. And um, it really is quite useful that way. Now, the last type is uh, actually a, a really simple version. It's called the buffer fast. Uh, this is supposed to be a really fast kind of buffer. It is quite similar to um, our buffer fixed. So, you know, it, when you get to the end, you're at the end. You have to go back yourself in order to overwrite. It doesn't do it for you. However, the only difference is that it has uh, limited types. Uh, and what I mean by that is the type of data you can, um, you, that you can store on here is uh, constricted. There's only a few. And this brings me to data types. What are they? So in GameMaker, we never have to deal with the different data types. However, in most other languages, you have to choose what kind of information you're going to store. So in GameMaker, you can just go variables equal to 256, for example. You don't have to think about what you're doing. This is where it changes uh, what we're using buffers, because when you're using buffers, you have to be very precise about what information you're storing. This is because buffers will be able to be really efficient, and uh, it's a lot more efficient for a computer if you already know what he's storing. So the first type is called buffer UA. So what is buffer U8? So U stands for unsigned, and 8 is a number of bytes, uh, bits, actually, it uses. And so it allows you to store numbers, an integer, between 0 and 255. And that is an integer. So I'm going to put an i in front to say it's an integer. The next type is called buffer s8. So uh, this is the same as before. And what this means is it is a signed 8-bit number. So signed means, um, you know, it has a sign in front, so plus or minus. So this is, again, an integer between minus 128 to, I'm going to put an arrow here so you don't confuse it with minus sign, uh, 127. All right, so the next type is called uh, buffer U8, uh, U16, sorry. And you can probably see, uh, you know, a kind of recurring pattern over here. So again, it will be an integer, unsigned integer, so it's between 0 and... Um, now, 16 means it has 16 bits. Now, that means it can store 2 to the power of 16, which is 65,000... Uh, sorry, 530... Uh, 65,535. So already you can store much bigger numbers uh, by using U16. Similarly, um, buffer underscore S16 will store um, you know, an integer between minus three, 32,768 uh, all the way to 32,767. Now, 
you also have um, U32, which um, stores all the way up to four mil no four hundred four four. I'm not sure what this is. Four billion two hundred and ninety four million nine hundred sixty seven thousand two hundred ninety five. Um, again, S32 uh, would simply be, you know, half of that, etc., etc. So, um, and this exists all the way up to U64, which, if you're interested, oh wait, never mind, U64 doesn't exist. Um, it would be, I think, in other languages, but not in Game Maker as of now, anyways. So U6, so it stops at U32. The next times are called uh, floats. So you have buffer underscore f16. Now a float basically means uh, is a floating point number. So that's a uh, a number which has uh, you know a decimal point. So f16 again uses 16 bits, and it can go plus minus six. 6,500, no, yes, yeah, 6,500, sorry, 65,504. Um, 65,504. Um, and that can have decimal points, so that's why I don't have the I in front. Now, it is quite important to note that uh, F16 currently isn't supported. Um, I'm going to put it here. Not supported uh, by GameMaker. So you'll have to use the other types. So you have F F32. Now this again is a floating point number, so it can hold any value between uh, it can hold any value, including decimal points, between what uh, I'm gonna write this down and decide what it is later. So that would be sixteen million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand two hundred sixteen, and Lastly, you have F64, which goes, uh, which uses eight bytes, and it goes all the way to two to the power of fifty-two minus one, uh, plus minus. So as you can see, you can store huge numbers uh, with buffers if you're using F64. I don't see why you would. Um, there are a, lot, a few more efficient ways of doing things if you're going to need such big numbers uh, when making games. Now, there are more types, two more types. So you have buffer underscore bool, which stores a boolean value, so either 1 or 0. So true or false, false. And lastly, you have buffer string. Now, buffer string is quite special because buffer string doesn't really have a byte usage. Um, it basically is a, you know, it will continue on taking all the space um, in your in, in your buffer uh, as a string. Um, it basically, uh, you know, you, the buffer will know it's the end of the string because it's null terminated. So it has a OXOO, something like that at the end, um, to say that it's the end of the string. Um, but uh, the, the, so when you're going to be using strings, you're most probably going to be using the buffer grow. Um, this way, buffer grow, not buffer grows, um, because this way you know you can keep having your string if it's too long, uh, unless you already know how long your string is going to be from the beginning. So th these are different types of information you can store. So you know. I tend to use U8 quite a lot because 0 to 255 is quite a, bi a big range uh, for most algorithms you're going to be implementing. Um, but uh, you know you may have to use floating point numbers sometimes where F32 will then be used. Uh, I can hardly think of a situation where I ever had to use F64. Um, you know, 16 million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand etc. is really quite big and if you really do need those big numbers I don't see why um, and you don't really need the decimal points just using U32 already gives you you know 4 billion you know 
different values you can store, which is absolutely huge. So, how exactly do you use them into Game Maker? So, there are a few basic functions which I'm going to write out over here. Uh, the more advanced one we're going to be using directly into uh, Game Maker. So the first one is called buffer create. Now, this will take a few arguments. So, uh, just a sec, where is it? Um, I can't remember the order of them. So the first one is the size. Where is my cursor? Here we go. Size. The second one is the type of buffer. And the third one is the alignment. I'm just going to put a, a leg because I don't have the space. So the size is obviously the size of the buffer in bytes. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to store, say, let's go back up here, uh, two of these, you know, two buffer U8s, U8, you know, 8 bits, so one byte. If you're going to store two, you're going to need two bytes. So you would put two in here if you were going to store two U8s, for example. The type refers to one of these types over here, buffer fixed, buffer grow, buffer wrap, and buffer fast. Um, again, if you're only going to be storing, I think it is... Uh, buffer U8 and buffer S8 and you're going to be using buffer fast because um, you know why not Buff buffer fast only supports U8 and S8 buffer fixed supports everything but you know if you're only going to have U8 and S8 then you may as well use buffer fast and finally the alignment is really quite um, I don't know an interesting concept uh, I'll go over it right now because uh, it's quite uh, a noteworthy um, you know, feature of buffers. Uh, you may not end up using them a lot. Um, but basically, if you have your buffer like that, you can imagine that the alignment is basically how it is split up. So if you have an alignment of 1, you're basically saying you have an alignment of 1 byte. So I'm going to split it up like that. And each of these regions are one byte long. Actually, I'm going to write them as eight for eight bits. Eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, and eight bits. And when you're going to be storing your data, uh, say you're going to be storing an eight bit data, and you draw it over here, you know, here's your eight bit data, your seek will move by eight bits, like so. You can draw your next piece of data, like so, or, I mean, write your next piece of data, etc., etc. So it just, you know, writes it sequentially. If you have something which is 16 bits long, it will take up all this space, and your seek will then move, you know, from here, two bit bytes forwards, and next time you write, it will simply carry on. So it snaps to an 8, by, uh, eight bits every time, if you have an alignment of 1. Now, say you have an alignment of 2, what happens then? Well, this is when, you know, it gets more interesting. So let me grab my rubber, there you go, eraser, whatever you want to call it. Actually, just to give more detail, here you go. And each of these actually are 16 bits each. Now, say you're going to be writing something which is 16 bits long, so like a, a U16, for example. It's simply going to move over here, and your seek will move from over here all the way to over here, because, you know, Oh, sorry, this is wrong. If I am writing something which is 16 bits long, it will be over here, because this is 16 bits. And so your seek will move from here all the way to over here. Now, if you are going to write something which is 8 bits long, so it will be, you know, half the size, you still have some space over here. So I'm going to make this green space. See, there's some space left. Uh, 8 bits of space. However, because your alignment is of 16 bits, your seek position will move by 16 bits minimum every time, or by multiples of 16 bits. So, you know, you kind of lost data over here, but at least you know all your data is nicely aligned to 16 bits. Uh, and next time you write something, it will simply be over here. So it could be another 8 bits, your seek position will move again over here, and if you do write, you know, something which is like 32 bits, Again, your data will just, you know, your, your seek position will move by multiple of 16 over here, like so. 
So this is what alignment is. It's more useful when using wrap buffers, for example, or when you're not quite sure what in what order your data is going to be stored in. Um, I haven't come to use it a lot. Uh, I just keep it to one most of the time. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's more uh, efficient to have uh, an alignment uh, of two, so 16 bits. If you're only going to be using 16 bits information, I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, I'm sure there's in some information about that on the internet, but to be uh, perfectly honest, I haven't had many performance issues when using buffers because of how fast they are. So uh, if I come back to um, the buffer create, this is what alignment is over here. Uh, then you can write to your buffers using buffer write, right? And this will basically write data to your buffer from the seek position. So every time you write, it'll push the seek position forwards, and next time you write, it'll read from that seek. Uh, it will write from that seek position uh, onwards. So you know it takes the buffer. which is a value that buffer create returns so you know that returns returns id so this returns the id of the buffer and you know you plug this in to here i hope this is visible on your screen it sure is over here um, next the type which is not the buffer type but is actually the data type you want to you want to draw uh, you want to store. So this will be, for example, buffer u8 or buffer s8, you know, all the ones we wrote over here. And whoops, finally you have um, you have the data, the actual value you want to store. So if you're storing, you know, this will, this will be the number, number you're storing in. And next time you, you know, write this, uh, because a seek position has moved forwards, it will write it automatically in the right position. Now, you have a, another function called buffer read. I think it's called buffer read. Now I could check if, just in case, yep, buffer read. And that also takes the buffer, oops, which is the same as this, and the type, and nothing else, obviously. And this will return the value. Now, it's quite important to note that buffer read will read from the bu the seek position forwards. So, if you have buffer, if you have, if you say write to the buffer, and then read from the buffer, you will not get your value back straight away because you have moved your. You know, if if I make a new note here and quickly demonstrate this over here, say you write some data over here your seek position will move forwards and now if you try to read data it will try to look over here this is supposed to be an I there you go <laughs> uh, it will try to look where you know over here but there's nothing so it will simply return zero so what you have to do is put your seek position back at the front so that it is now here and now if you try to read it will return whatever is over here so the function you use for that is called buffer seek. Um, this is supposed to have an R. And buffer seek takes, uh, I think, a few arguments actually. It's not um, all that um, simple buffers. It will once again take the buffer uh, ID, which is returned by buffer create, so it's the same as this one as well. It will take the base and the offset. So, what is the buffer? The the, the base. The base basically is um, where uh, you know the base of your offset. So, the offset will say how many bytes away from the base you want to place a seek, and the base will either be buffer seek start, which is the very start of the buffer. Buffer seek relative, which is the current position of this of uh, the seek position, and buffer seek n, which is the end of the buffer. And so, if you say have the base being uh, buffer seek start, so the start and offset being zero, 
you're basically setting it at the start. If offset was 1, it will be 1 byte away from the start, 2, 2 bytes, etc. If it was buffer seek end, it will be the same thing, but from the end instead. So this is the basic functions you want to you want to use for buffers. So that has been quite a, a lengthy explanation. Let's have a look inside uh, Game Maker how we can actually uh, use it. So let's create a quick object like so. Let's call it obj underscore buffer. Doesn't truly matter because we're only going to have one. We're not going to reference it or anything. And let's create a new create event. So remember, the first thing we want to do is actually create our buffer. So um, we're going to create a new variable called buffer. And we're going to set it equal to buffer underscore create. And now we have to put our different um, variables. So let's say we have we want a 4-byte buffer. So we put a 4 inside the size. We want the buffer type to be buffer fixed to start off with. We're going to start with something quite simple. And the alignment will be of 1. We're not going to you know, mess around with alignments too much this uh, video because setting up an actual project that will require um, alignment to be, you know, apparent somehow and useful, uh, you know, takes quite some time. It's quite a, I'm not going to say advanced feature, I'm going to say it's, it's used for more advanced projects mostly. Anyway, so now we have our buffer ID stored inside a variable called buffer. We can start writing data to it. So let's use a function called buffer underscore write. And now we have three arguments once again. Now we said that the first one was the ID of our buffer which we call buffer. The second one is the type of data we're going to store. Now, let's think about what we're going to store. Let's say we want to store number 25. 25 is an integer, and it is um, between 0 and 255. So according to our notes over here, uh, we can use buffer u8. So this is what we're going to be using. Buffer underscore u8. Finally, we have the value. We said 25, so you write 25 and we end with a semicolon. Now, buffer, right now our buffer can store four bytes and we only used one byte. So let's just copy this over here, paste it, you know, four more times maybe. And we can now, you know, change those values over here. So let's make 58, maybe 210 and uh, 11. Right now, we basically have the first byte storing 25, the second byte is storing 58, the third byte is storing 210, and the fourth byte is storing 11. Now, our seek position is at the very end of our buffer because we used our whole buffer. And if we want to read from that buffer, we want to move our seek position back to the front. So what we use is the function called buffer underscore seek. Now, we already looked at that. It uses three arguments. The first one being a buffer ID. We called it buffer. Our base, which we're going to, you know, use the start, so buffer underscore seek underscore start, and the offset. Now we want it to be the, the start again, so the start is zero bytes away from the start, so we simply type in zero and semicolon. Now our seek position is back at the front, and if we were to write data uh, to our buffer right now, it would overwrite whatever is over here, so, you know, um, you have to keep that in mind. But what we want to do now is read our data. So we use something called buffer underscore read, and it takes two arguments only. The first being the buffer ID, the second the type of data we are about to read. Let's, so right now we're only storing buffer u8, so we can simply type buffer u8. This will return the very first byte that we stored. Um, so what we want to do is just display it on screen. I'm going to use show underscore message string like so and only one s uh, two s's over here uh, and close this so so message brackets string brackets buffer read brackets you know buffer buffer u8 close all the brackets and so this should show a message with you know the first byte we saw which is 25 let's simply copy and paste this three more times And now it should read it sequentially. So this guy, right, will actually write at position 0. The second run writes at position 1, third position 2, 
the fourth position three. Now this one will actually reset the position to position zero. Now when we use buffer read, it will you know read from position zero and move our seek position by one byte. So the next one we read will actually read from position one because the seek position moved forwards, etc. etc. So now we should be able to read our data sequentially. If I create a room and place our object and press play, we should see 25, 58, 210, and 11. So again, 25, 58, 210, and 11, which is the data that we put in here at the beginning. Now, let's say that you need to store a really big number, you know, a number which is bigger than 255, say 512. The problem you have right now with the current setup is that we're using buffer U8. And buffer U8 can only store up to 255. So we have to use something bigger. For example, buffer U16. So let's say that our second number, we want to be buffer U16. We simply change this to 16 over here, buffer U16, and we put our new number in. We said 512. Now, what we'll change now is that um, buffer U16 uses two bytes of information. So we'll move the seek by two bytes. So our next piece of data will not be, you know, written at position two, but will in fact be written at position three. And our piece of data after that will not be written at position three, but in fact at position four. Now, the problem we have now is that we are not using four bytes anymore. We're actually using five bytes because we have three buffer U8s, one byte each, and one buffer U16, which is two bytes. So what we have to do is come back to our buffer create and change it back to 5 bytes. Now this is still not going to work correctly because when we're reading, our second read is actually a buffer U8. So this is not going to give us the right value. It's going to try to read 8 bytes of a 16 byte number. So what we have to do is change him to, to buffer U16 instead. Again, because we're now reading 16 bytes, is going to is going to uh, sorry 16 bits is going to be moving our seek by two bytes so the next one will be at position three and the one after that position four now if we save and play we should see our numbers appearing in the right order again so 25 512 210 and 11 so as you can see we can store bigger numbers by using bigger um, what do you call them? Data types. Now, say that you wrote all of your data, but you know, but you know, you need to change a certain piece of data. One way to do this would simply be to use buffer seek, place it in front of the piece of data you want to change, and then write it. The problem with that is that you're going to be moving your seek around, and then if you want to write back again at the back of the buffer you forgot whereabouts you were, and unless you stored it somewhere, it's not going to work out well. So there is another function called buffer underscore poke. Buffer poke allows you to poke data into your buffer without moving the seek position. So it is basically a buffer write with an extra oh, um, argument. So let's see how it works. The first value is going to be our buffer. The second is going to be the offset. That is from the beginning of your buffer. So if we want to change the third piece of information that we have in here, which is uh, from position three onwards, we're going to want an offset of three bytes. Next is the type. So we want to store a U8. And after that, we have a value, which we're going to change from 210 to five, for example. Close that, close the brackets, and now what will happen is at position 0, we're going to write an 8-bit integer of 25. After that, at position 1, we're going to write a 16-bit integer, 512. After that, two, uh, 2 bytes later, so position 3, we're going to be writing a 1-byte 210 and a 1-byte 11 at position 4. Now, buffer poke will go back and say, actually, position 3 is now going to store 5. So basically, we're overwriting what we did in this line over here. 
Now, this line over here will no longer read 210, but 5. So if we press play and let it load, we see 25, 512, 5, 11. So using buffer poke, you can change the order in which you write your data. Uh, this is more useful if you have a buffer that you're going to be, you know, storing a specific data to. For example, you know, you know the first two bytes are going to be the position of the player, the next two bytes are going to be, for example, uh, its health, etc. And you want to change one of the values. You don't want to rewrite everything, you just want to change one thing. This is when you would, you would be using buffer poke. Now, similarly, you can do something uh, similar with um, for reading, and it's called buffer peak. So after all this, I can use buffer underscore peak. It will take a buffer, which is our buffer ID, the offset, which is again the offset from the beginning. So say we want to read the second number, which is by the way a U16. Um, without moving the seek position, we simply take an offset of 1, because it's 1 byte away from the front, and the type. So our second number is a buffer underscore u16. Now, again, this will return some value, so I'm going to copy and paste the show message string part over here, just so that we can see um, you know, that it returns a correct value, and it should give us our second piece of data. So we have 25, 512, 511, and now we have 512 again, which is what buffer C, uh, peak told, uh, told us. So this is it for reading and writing, basically. Um, I think there are a few other uh, things that may be worth mentioning, uh, although I won't be covering those in this tutorial um, because it isn't quite the basics. So what we're going to be looking at now are some you know, simple ways to save and load your buffers. So, there are two functions, one of them being buffer save, the other one being buffer load. So, say over here I use the function buffer underscore save. It will take two arguments, the first being our buffer, the second being the file name. Now, this will be relative to, you know, um, the sandbox location of your um, project. And we're just going to call it buffer.buff. Buf. It can be dot anything you like. It could even not take an extension. I'm just going to call it dot buff because it's a buffer. Now, what we can do is simply load it. You can do this anywhere within your project at any time. I'm going to do it right after, which is kind of stupid because why would you save it then load it straight after? But basically, Buffer save, first of all, will create a file that contains your buffer information. Buffer load will create a buffer that contains the information stored within the, the, the file that you specify. So I can go buffer underscore 2 is equal to buffer underscore load and the file name. Buffer dot buff. So what we're doing here is creating a buffer writing a bunch of information to it, saving the buffer, and now we're using buffer load to generate a new buffer and fill it with the information stored inside the buffer, buffer.buff. Basically, we're duplicating our buffer by saving and loading it. There are better ways of doing this. I think there's a buffer copy or something like that. Uh, yeah, buffer copy, which allows you to do that. But this is to demonstrate the saving and loading system. So now, if I copy all those show messages over here, and paste it over here, and simply replace buffer by buffer underscore 2 every time, what we should have is um, uh, you know, a bunch of numbers coming onto the screen, then it's saving and loading, and the same number is showing up on the screen, even though we're reading it from a different buffer. So let's press play and see if it works. 25. 512, 511, 512. 25, 512, 511, 512. It's working. So, basically, this is a really good way to create a saving system. Say you want to save only the player stats, or maybe you want to save the world, but 
without using the built-in safe systems. Buffers are probably one of the best ways of doing so. They are, they are very efficient, they give very small file size. Uh, you can even encrypt them using buffer... Uh, and you can encode it base64, which isn't quite the same. Uh, but I thought there was um, encryption in there. I can't see it uh, in the GameMaker Studio manual. But no, I may be wrong about that. But you can most certainly do stuff like get the MD5 or, or the SHA1 of the buffer, which is basically a um, uh, <coughs> a unique um, encrypt like undecryptable uh, piece of data for that uh, buffer. So if you're doing some things while sending via the internet um, and you want to send you know, some encrypted data, um, say you're using passwords for example, you don't want to be storing your password online, you want to be storing an MD5 of the password online uh, just to check if it's the same because it's very rare for two strings to have the same MD5. Um, so yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with buffers. It's really well documented as well. I think it's one of the best documented parts of the Game Maker Manual. Um, so you can go and read all about it. I definitely recommend using buffers in most of your projects. Uh, if you're going to do anything with data, they're very, very powerful. So I've been Felix, and thanks a lot for watching. If you found this at all useful, or you want to see more of those videos, please like and subscribe. Um, and if you have any questions about buffers or an anything about game creation with GameMaker in general, please ask in the comments below. And I'll see you guys later.